Please be seated. Oh, look at all those smiling faces out there. It's great, great y'all have made it here again tonight. Uh, those that are that are here in person, and those of you uh, online uh, on your on your phones or on computers or whatever. Um, please keep in mind that uh, if you're on Facebook, you can go to the top right hand corner, and there's a drop down where you can choose to look at, and I believe you can print the, um, the uh, books also that we're working with. Uh, tonight we're in the self-control unit. There's a picture of it right there. That's what it looks like. And got that big, big, nice stop sign right there to remind us of that at all times. And we're going to be starting on page uh, 48. One of the things that, that we need to do as teachers is always be aware uh, the lessons, the lesson plans, and and review your lessons before you present yourself to teach a, a class, and you know be prepared. Uh, no matter how many times you've taught the piece of solution, read the piece of solution, and and you're using it in your life, but no matter how many times you still need to go over it, you still need to review. Uh, and so what we'd like to do, first of all, knowing we're going to be starting on page 48, let's go on over to the lesson plan real quick. And so procedure number seven, we had uh, briefly embarked upon this, but um, it says to remind students that in previous lessons, you learned how to use the STOP acronym. And remember the STOP acronym, of course. You know, we've got it uh, right here. STOP acronym, STOP, THINK, OPTIONS, PROCEED. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it sounds like a little quick thing right there, but you really need to stop and think about things. You know, especially, you know, you get, uh, get a feeling that something you're doing could, be, could not be quite right. Um, and this same method can be applied con uh, to controlling our emotions, of course, is, is what we want to do because those, those feelings, those emotions come and then uh, actions soon follow. So we want to be very careful what we're doing. Okay, so we already have gone through applying self-control to our emotions found on page 46. I think we covered that pretty thoroughly. And it says to have students turn to the section entitled Understanding the Main Point, found on page 48 through 51. And to complete the scenarios based upon the example as outlined in our handbooks, discuss students' answers and point out that by practicing appropriate responses to common situations, you gain skills in how to respond with self-control. So we're going to go ahead and turn over to page 48 now. Uh, we did we did quite a review uh, the last class, and so we're just going to start out right here, and hopefully we'll get to the point where we do uh, another review of this chapter in in the section what I have learned. So page forty eight in your self control manual. It's called understanding the main point, and it says to read the following scenarios and fill in the blanks based on the examples below or the example below. So our example for this scenario, this scenario is, number one, Mindy missed the final question of the state championship academic challenge. A few team members started putting her down. One even said, what's a loser like you doing on our team anyway? Okay, that's pretty harsh, isn't it? Now remember what we're talking about here. Let's, let's go ahead and look back for just a moment, just as a real quick reminder, is... We want to, uh, page 46, apply the self-control to our emotions. Yeah, and, and, and that, I mean, just think about what was said to her just then. You know, what's a loser like you doing on our team anyway? After she's already, you know, kicking herself and already embarrassed, you know, because it, it's all kind of, you know, laying on her shoulders, the final question, right? And so uh, that's, that's quite an emotional ordeal. So we want to apply self-control to our emotions, and, and we want to keep in mind, go on back to page 45 real quick, and we want to keep in mind, uh, you know, the, uh, keeping it all in perspective. Is this really going to make a huge difference in your life, this one thing? 
is it going to change that you're that you're not going to wake up tomorrow or you're not going to have any food to eat or or something terrible is going to occur just because you answered the question wrong you missed that question and now people are chastising you you know keep it in perspective what what is this really going to matter in your life a week from now a month from now 10 years from now it's not so Let's look at the two different scenarios on how she would handle this. One of them being not showing self-control and the other one being showing self-control. It's kind of interesting. And, and it could be some of you kind of think about it and, and think about yourselves when looking at this, whether it be the positive or the negative aspect. So not showing self-control. What kind of thoughts might she have? Now, in, in order to move things along in this particular teaching scenario, it's not a, a classroom scenario, so to speak. So I'm going to uh, throw some out there, okay? So not showing self-control, she might be thinking, well, who in the world does she think she is? She's always picking on me. Or, man, she missed the question one time, too. Who does she think she really is? I, I ought to tell her, give her a piece of my mind or something, you know. And then there's the feelings. Feeling angry, embarrassed. I mean, come on. She missed that final question, the state championship, you know. And everybody saw it. So she's already embarrassed and frustrated and hurt and disappointed. And then, then by this statement, it just adds to it. What's a loser like you doing on our team anyway? I mean, think about it for a minute. What would you do? What would you do without being taught the peaceful solution? Think about that. And some of you who are fairly new to the peaceful solution, or some of us old timers too, eh? You know, what would you do? What would you think, you know? And then actions. Well, if she was not practicing self-control, she might, you know, yell out, well, you, you're a loser too, or, or, you know, some choice words thrown at the person. And then possible consequences. Well, a, a conflict could develop. They could get in a fight. Um, they could get suspended from school or, or get removed from any future um, uh, uh, state championships on this particular academic challenge. So there's a whole lot of things that could take place that would be negative because of not showing self-control. <clears throat> Did any of you see yourselves in that anywhere? You know, if someone said that to you, what's a loser like you doing on, on our team anyway? Would you hold it together and, uh, and not jump back in their face? I mean, think about it for a minute, you know. And, and you don't have to raise your hand or anything, but, but just realize that if that's so, you might want to really pay attention to this. Now, on the next uh, scenario there, it's showing self-control. Now, this is what she would do if she showed self-control in this particular instance. Oh, man, I've messed up now. We're not going to win the state championship, you know. She might be thinking that and, and uh, thinking, you know, how many people saw me do that and, and all. And then her feelings, of course, she's going to be embarrassed by the whole thing, frustrated, hurt, disappointed, just like in the other scenario. The same feelings are coming forth, but um, now the actions, this is, where, this is where the cool thoughts make a difference, you know. <clears throat> instead, of thinking, instead of thinking on a, on a personal level and, and, and thinking uh, of, of a personal attack on the other person, she's looking at what occurred stating the facts to herself in her mind and her thoughts. Wow, I messed up now. I'm not going to win the state championship. And even though the feelings are the same, embarrassed, frustrated, hurt, disappointed, she decides by using self-control and probably the stock ac acronym in there, okay, she decides to apologize and she might say, you know, I feel really bad about this whole thing, but, you know, I did my best which is really how it, how it should be. I mean, they, people should be able to accept that there are going to be, when there's these challenges like this, there is going to be a, quote, loser and a winner, if you will. Um, whereas really all that participated could be considered winners in that they got up there and did it and actually uh, 
even took that risk of embarrassment and so forth. So the possible rewards instead of consequences, since she did use self-control, you know, the conflict was avoided. Um, you know, there's no possibility of them getting in a fight or anything, right? Because we have cool thoughts and cool statements taking place, at least from one person, right? And um, so handling the situation with self-control, everything stayed together. They're not going to kick, get kicked off the team, probably. Um, not going to have to go see the principal or anything like that, okay? So think about that and see where you might have done the same thing recently, too. Use self-control in a particular situation, which, you know, was embarrassing or you felt pretty bad or uh, someone said something to you you really didn't like. Think about it. All right, let's go ahead and look at the next one. Now, Juan is at his best friend Richard's party. This is on page 49. And Richard suddenly takes out a joint and lights it up, takes a hit, and then passes it around. It is now Juan's turn to take a hit. Wow. Okay. So not showing self-control, what could be some of the things that would take place in his mind? And what would he do? Possibly some of you have been in a similar situation in the past. Uh, hopefully none of it's coming your way right now, but it might be. Possibly some of you that are watching tonight online. Is this situation something similar coming up? Someone passes you the joint that's ringing wet with someone's uh, saliva and, uh, you know, passing it around. No telling how many people have already slurped on it, you know. So, you know, there's a couple of reasons why not to take this and, and partake of it. But not using self-control, some of the thoughts might be, Oh, man, if I don't take the hit off this joint, they're going to think I'm a loser, you know. Uh, I'll never get to come to another one of the parties again. You know, the peer pressure is a very strong thing, right? We've already covered a little bit about peer pressure in the previous lessons. But some of the feelings, you know, of, of that, um, especially if he wasn't expecting anything like this, uh, you could be shocked, confused scared, if you've never done this type of thing before, embarrassed and just overwhelmed at the entire situation. That could be the feelings, you know, whether you're going to use self-control or not. So, but the thoughts, you know, that, that thought that he had is kind of leading him down the, the wrong track right away. Remember, it's thoughts, feelings, actions, then rewards or consequences. So, Here's the action. So Juan takes the joint and starts smoking on it. All right, so the possible consequences that could come his way, well, he could lose his self-respect right there, which I'm sure he already did to some degree just by doing something like that that he knew was wrong, that he shouldn't do, and that he had not done up to that point and possibly had used self-control in some instances to that point. But that's the first thing that goes downhill is the self-respect, the knowing that you just did something terrible and that can have some, some major consequences. He could be, he could, he could start, you know, uh, marijuana tends to be kind of a, a gate opener to other drugs. I know people that are pro-drug um, folks uh, will say, well, that's foolishness. No, it does not. But but I can tell you, and many of you in here probably too, that yes, it does. You know, there's there's no argument with that. Anybody with any experience experience in this situation would know that it most definitely opens the gate to other drugs and other other uh, harmful uh, actions. <clears throat> so, you know, it could harm his body and mind. Again, it most definitely will. There is no maybe or might be to it. It will harm the mind and the body. And you can act irrationally and get in trouble, you know, parents, police, school. Uh, you could have a wreck. You could put yourself in a risky situation and die in one night. You know, all these things take place. They take place every day, every day in this world that takes place. And some of you out there watching tonight, you know, there's some that are, that are watching... Um, because of programs that you're in that 
that have the peaceful solution as the main curriculum in that program. And um, what got us sometimes into those programs are things that, you know, we might should not have done, or at least that we might be being accused of. So it's, it's important to remember that when you put yourself in a bad situation, you know, I would look at the whole thing and say, what was he doing at the party in the first place? But when you put yourself in a bad situation, you know, you got to know that there's probably something bad that's going to come your way somewhere down the line in that situation. You, you just don't get by with it, okay? Now, in showing self-control, um, you know, his thoughts might be, before he even went to the party, man, I don't want to go to that party. <laughs> uh, but his thoughts, you know, with this having occurred, he is at the party, the joints lit up, he, and it gets passed around. And, and some of the thoughts he might have is, man, uh, you know, I can't believe my best friend's asking me to do this, you know? And, and uh, you know, the right thoughts would be, I'm not going to do this for anybody. I'm not going to mess up my brain. I'm not going to mess up my, my mind. I'm not going to mess up my life. You know, maybe I need to look at this person that I call a friend and and think hard about whether it's going to remain that way or not. So the feelings, you know, shocked, overwhelmed, scared, embarrassed, you know, just, just like before, just like in the other scenario, all the same same type of feelings, except with one difference, you know. Now we have somebody who's kind of put their foot down. And so instead of being overwhelmed with everything taking place, what we have is some determination. We have some, some intestinal fortitude, some call it, you know, putting your foot, standing firm in your beliefs and in, in your actions and saying against all odds and knowing that you're probably not going to have that friend anymore and even some others that might be at the party, you know. Juan says, no way, man, I decided a long time ago never to do that kind of thing, and you'd be better off not doing it too. You know, make that statement, be firm. So what are the possible rewards that could come his way? Well, first of all, he saves his mind, you know. If he doesn't get involved in the drugs, he's probably not going to, you know, uh, um, he's probably not going to jump in and start doing some, some hard drugs along the way, you know. Um, he could maintain his self-respect knowing he stood for something rather than falling for, for some foolishness and that he made the right choice even under pressure. And that's the hard thing is, you know, ma is making the right choice under pressure is a, um, is a big deal. To be able to do that, man, it, it takes that type of determination because um, the pressure was there in that situation. And think about it. Some of you have probably been there. Uh, uh, if you you have been there, if you've ever done any drugs, you've been in this situation before. Something very similar in your life. Okay, well let's uh, let's take a look here at page fifty. <clears throat> now this one is interesting in that um, Tamika was disturbing the class. Her teacher noticed and told her to stop talking and pay attention. Now, this goes on all the time in, in classrooms. But not showing self-control, some of the thoughts that uh, Tamika might have would be, well, why does she just leave me alone? There's other people talking too, you know. That might be one of the thoughts that's going through her mind. Or, you know, well, I wasn't really, I wasn't really you know, taking too much time. I haven't, I haven't, you know, nobody's really paying attention. What's the big deal? Feelings, you know, could be that uh, uh, she might have been embarrassed because the teacher called her out on it, angry and hurt. And by not using self-control, her action might be that she keeps on talking or mouths off to the teacher or something like that. Possible consequences could be Tamika would lose her, of course, her self-respect and also the respect of the other students and the teacher and she could have to go to the principal's office, get suspended, something like that could take place. And also, you know, by not being corrected and, and going along with that, she uh, might do that again in the future, too. Now, showing self-control, on the other hand, Tamika might think, you know, she's right. I need to stop talking. I'm not, I'm not acting right. 
I need to stand firm in what I know is right to do. And then the feelings, of course, she'd be a bit embarrassed because she was called out in front of the students. But then the action that she needs to take if she's practicing self-control would be what? She needs to stop talking like the teacher told her to do, right? So Tamika there would maintain her self-respect, the respect of the other students, you know, seeing that even though she did something wrong, she's willing to correct it right there on the spot, you know, um, uh, and that the, and the teacher, too, would really respect that, that, okay, she did something, we corrected it, and it's all okay. You know, things like that are going to occur from time to time. And she would also have the satisfaction of knowing that she's learning to practice self-control and, and doing it right. Okay, let's go on to another one. On page 51, Muhammad was late getting home and missed his curfew. He tried to explain that it wasn't his fault, but his parents told him to stop making excuses and sent him to his room. Surely nobody's ever been in that situation before, right? Anyone sitting here? Well, I see a bunch of smiles out there and, and all. It must have taken place in your life somewhere. Okay, so you know what Muhammad's talking about, right? Yeah, so he started trying to explain, his, explain it away. And so here's his thoughts in not showing self-control. And think about it. You, 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 might, you might think back on a time when this occurred, and, and you might think what thoughts were going through your mind. Remember, the subconscious mind is very powerful. You could probably remember the situation, remember what room you were in, who was there, what time you got home, what you were doing before that, all these things, if you think about it for a moment. So some of the thoughts from Muhammad getting home late and his parents checking him on it is, ah, oh, they never listened to me anyway. This is so unfair. It's not my fault. I tried to tell them what was wrong. You know, and of course, the many, many excuses that could come um, because you're out there doing something you shouldn't be doing anyway, or, or um, you know, it, it leads to those things. But anyway, the feelings that he might have is, you know, being angry, upset, frustrated, rejected, you know, and, and, and of course, guilty, knowing that, you know what, I should have been home, but he's not really, he's not really going with that. And his actions could be, you know, again, not practicing self-control, he could argue some more with his parents, stomp off to his room, slam the door, throw some things around, and, you know, determine to get even or something. But his consequences could be also losing his self-respect, losing his parents' respect, uh, losing some privileges. Um, you know, there's all kinds of things that could take place, and, and also affecting his ability to go out in the future, you know, some of those privileges, uh, because he's not... He's not accepting the correction. On the other hand, if he practices self-control, let's take a look at it. Man, I really messed up. I knew I should have left earlier. And his feelings, you know, guilty, sad, frustrated, upset with himself, that guilt that comes, you know. His actions, Muhammad could apologize to his parents, you know, and, and tell them, you know, he's determined not to do it again. Some of the possible rewards, he, of course, would maintain his self-respect, and um, uh, he, he might still get grounded, but probably with less severe uh, consequences. And, and, and the, the, the thought that, you know, he practiced self-control, and his parents are going to please, be pleased with him, and he could be pleased with himself somewhat for, for doing that, for practicing the self-control, and... and you know, understanding that he got corrected and accepting that correction. So at the bottom of page 51, as you can see from these exercises, self-control can be used in any situation at any time. And that's absolutely true. Any situation at any time. You can use it at home. You can use it at work. You can use it in a classroom situation. You can use it at the grocery store. You can use it while you're driving your car. I mean, self-control can be used everywhere and should be used everywhere. Controlling your thoughts, you can control your feelings, and in many cases, the outcome of the situation and the rewards are always well worth it. And I, I assure you, by using self-control, you will be controlling the outcome of the situation to a much better degree than you would by not using self-control. 
By not using self-control, you don't know what's going to occur. It could go any way. But by using self-control, hey, it, it, really, it really helps. On page 52, it says, bear this in mind. Learning to apply self-control can help you identify what emotions you feel and deal with them effectively to make wiser, more appropriate decisions. That's a lot of words right there. Let's take it a little bit slower, okay? Learning to apply self-control, so you got to practice it and you're going to fail sometimes and, you know, pull yourself up and get started again. So learning to, to apply self-control can help you to identify what emotions you feel. And this is an important part of it. You've got to identify those motion, emotions. And we've had we've had a little bit of uh, you know we've had a little bit of uh, of work on that on on looking at the emotions and realizing if you're if you're behaving irrationally and you know you could be very confused with some of the emotions that you that you have um, and understanding uh, just like on page thirty two uh, in the in the uh, in the self control book. You've got the positive emotions right there that you can look at, and that's just some of them. It's positive emotions that you can identify and see that you're, you know, doing right or not. And on page 31 of the self-control book, you can see the negative emotions, a lot of them that are listed. So if you get to a point where you can identify it, and just like the aggravation, anger, depression, disappointment, embarrassment, and fear, all these things, the jealousy, humiliation, you, you, can, you can look at these negative emotions, and then, let's go back to 52, you can identify what emotions you're feeling, and you can start working on those things. You can deal with them more effectively to make a wiser, more appropriate decision. If you don't know what you're feeling, then you're going to be in that confused state, which, of course, sometimes it is a little bit confusing. You know, there's a fine line there on, you know, the positive or the negative emotions sometimes. They're kind of hard to identify. Not always, but sometimes they are. So keep all of that in mind as we continue on here, and we're going to do a little bit of a uh, in review on the chapter, if you will. Let's go back to our lesson plan for just a moment. <clears throat> That's on lesson plan two, page E. Um, okay, so procedure number eight. We are going to conclude the lesson by instructing students to turn to page 53. So go ahead and feel free now to turn to page 53. And we're going to read this section, What I Have Learned. Now, it says to emphasize to students, so, you know, really, uh, really focus on it and point out to students that the need to always identify their feelings in order to respond in, a, in an appropriate moral way. So if you can identify that you're feeling angry, you can slow it down and realize that with what you learned, the next step is what you do with your anger. You've got to control. You realize, hey, I'm angry. I can feel it. Now, what am I going to do? And you can start working on controlling that anger rather than just letting it blow, blow in the wind and get in some trouble. Or if you identify that you're feeling some fear, you know, you can, you can deal with it appropriately instead of jumping up in someone's face and, and making things worse. So it's all about using self-control using the self-control and identifying those feelings so you know what to do, so you, so you know what option to choose to make that right choice. So also we want to stress that if self-control is consistently practiced, we can learn to avoid the impulsive behavior, some call it knee-jerk uh, reaction, and control our emotions to our own advantage. And that's what we want to remember always to do. I'm going to keep on showing you this on and off. I'm sure the other teachers will point it out too while we're in this particular book. Stop and think, you know, think about it and realize what's going on, how you're being affected by the feelings you're having. Is it fear? Is it anger? Is it humiliation? You know, what is it? What is it you're feeling at this time? Think about that, and then look at your options and what you can do. <clears throat> you know, if it's a negative emotion that you're feeling, 
you you have an option there to to deal with it in a right way. You, as a student and a teacher in training of the peaceful solution, you will want to look at the positive options of how you can deal with this situation and make the right choice. So there's always those other options available which are negative, but you're, you don't want to go there. You want to identify it and stay away from those, those negative, the negative choices that you could make, right? Okay. Now that being said, we're going to go ahead and turn over to page 53. And this is entitled, What I Have Learned. Now, what I've learned, the first bullet point there, or the first box that's checked, is emotions are feelings that include both positive and negative responses triggered by what I experience. Emotions are feelings that include both positive and negative responses triggered by what I experience. And what I'd like to do is turn to page 30. page 30 and you can see the faces there that show you know the look of the emotions on a person uh, whether it be kind of confused or, or, or glad or, or mad or sad or what, whatever the case might be uh, emotions are strong physical and mental responses strong physical and mental responses triggered and remember those triggers a trigger is something that what it starts a process. A trigger starts a process. If you pull a trigger on a gun, it starts the process of a, a spring, you know, uh, um, um, not expanding, but, but the opposite, contracting, where it would cause eventually a couple lev levers to move and a hammer to, to fall on a bullet, which would cause it to shoot. Well, it's, it's the same, and, and that occurs like, Boom, just immediately. It's the same thing with us. These triggers, it, it occurs, it can occur immediately if we're not careful. We need to really notice these things and be aware of the triggers that we know that might be a problem. If you already know that there's some quirk that you don't like with your coworker, or you know some pet peeve they call them that type thing you know these things are kind of these these things are triggers to you well be prepared for them be prepared work on it set your mind in advance to guard that okay so these these tr these um, emotions are triggered by what we experience a trigger is something that starts a process emotions are triggered by what we hear what we see what we smell, what we taste, what we touch, what we think. There's so many things that can trigger this. These, the, the influences and the actions all around us have such an extreme effect on us. I'm going to continue on here for a minute because these, these triggers, you need to know this, these triggers can affect what we feel almost instantaneously and our brain processes millions of pieces of information per second. Now, the emotions can, can occur without conscious thought and within a split second of the event that triggered them, okay? Um, so, and then down at the bottom, I, I want to mention this. The feelings that might not be so automatic or as, I did, or as easily identified, like fear, uh, they could be triggered by memories and might require conscious thought, you know, where, where you actually... You know, go back in time, if you will. You you remember this thing, and and that's where your your mind pulls up that memory bank, and and that's where you're actually sitting in that room, and you can smell the the meatloaf that's cooking in the oven, and and you can you can taste the lemonade that was prepared for you by your grandmother, or whatever the case might be, or the the cookies, or or you know what was going on. You know some of the feelings that you were having, even if it was twenty or thirty years ago. You know, right? I mean, you could think about that. That's how these things take place. And so because you have had fond memories, you know, you feel glad. Well, the same thing can occur on the negative part of it, too. You know, you might remember something negative and, and it might get you kind of off on the wrong track there and, and you bust off on somebody. 
in, in not controlling yourself. So we want to always be, we always want to know what our triggers are, positive and negative, uh, mostly negative to really guard those things. Um, and, and we want to be able to identify the emotions that we're feeling at the time. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at the next checkbox. <clears throat> emotions are important. They inform me of my likes, my dislikes, and my needs, and they help me communicate with others and enjoy life's experiences. So that thing right there, they, they inform you. The emotions let you know if, if you're glad, if you're sad, if you're angry, whatever the case might be, and, and they help you to communicate. So it's, it's two things going on here, the informing of so it's letting you know. So it's actually communicating to you what you're going through. And then it helps to communicate with others because you don't even have to say anything to anybody. You can look at them with a stern look and they already know, okay, uh, something's going on here. Let me pay attention to what's going on here. They're displeased about something. Or you could look at somebody and smile and they're going to realize, well, you know, he looks like he's pretty glad. So you're communicating to them without saying even a word. It's amazing. Let's turn over to page 29. Now, in the introduction of chapter 2, which is controlling your emotions to your advantage, you have the power to control your thoughts and emotions that arise from the way you perceive a situation. Emotions are what we feel, and no one feels the same way every day, every hour, every minute of their lives. Have you ever felt cheerful one minute and this situation occurs and, and that fast you can feel down and depressed? I mean, just boom, boom, like someone flipped a switch. And although they change these emotions, they're nonetheless important to our lives. So get this right here, that emotions inform us of our likes, dislikes, and needs. They also help us to communicate with others and allow us to enjoy life's experiences. But they've got to be controlled. Without emotions, life would be dull and boring. Can you imagine? I'm sure you could. Could you imagine not having any emotions? It's just like I smiled just then about this a little bit, but what if it were just like, could you imagine not having any emotions? You would not know anything about what's going on with yourself or with anybody else. It would be just like some robotic experience. <laughs> I mean, come on. What would life be like? People need to know if you're, if you're sad. In, in, some, in some instances, I mean, they, they'll need to know that you're sad or that you're, that you're a little bit upset right now um, or, or that you're really feeling glad about something. So they can appropriately adjust their behavior um, based upon the emotions they see, you know, coming from you. You're communicating with them. Our experiences would be lifeless and our communication and relationships would be uninteresting. However, as important as emotions are, if they're not controlled, they will control you. Let's go on back over to page 53. All right, the next checkbox, emotions affect me physically. And stop right there for a minute. Emotions affect me physically. Think about it. Everybody here has experienced emotions today. Today, this very day, you experienced emotions. Do you know how they affected you physically? Do you know if you got kind of angry about something? Do you know how you felt? Do you know if you were joyful about something? How did you feel? Were you sad? Did it take all your energy away? Think about it a minute. Today, this very day, everyone in this room experienced some kind of emotion. We don't even have to go back you know, yesterday or the day before. Now, possibly you didn't experience really strong emotions or you controlled yourself that it didn't get really carried away. But what about some days ago? Is there one back there a few days ago where it might not have been that way? Think about it a little bit. Let's turn over. Um, well, hold on. Prolonged stressful emotions can be strenuous on your body, affecting uh, your general health. Let's turn over to page... Um, 34, and about halfway down, it says not just skin deep, okay? Emotions, whether negative or positive, are powerful. They have the capacity to affect you both physically and mentally. 
You know, one of the um, one of the things that works really well um, when when you're kind of in front of a, a like a crowd you don't know and you're trying to break the ice a little bit, or even if you're trying to get your point across, and, and this is great for teachers, uh, it's great for speakers, but telling a story. And when, when I say a story, I don't mean making something up. I mean telling a story, telling a life story. That's appropriate, of course, uh, either yours or somebody else's, an event that took place and that you're aware of in, in somebody's life. It could be, could be somebody you know, somebody, uh, a celebrity or something, who knows, or, or even yourself. Um, but these stories tend to uh, bring people to reality because everyone has experienced stories in their life. Everyone has a story. You might not be able to communicate it uh, the right way, but but a lot of a lot of times you can, and it really makes it interesting because people have all experienced things and they can they can identify with it. And say, you know, that occurred to me too. <laughs> so keep that in mind. They're, the the emotions are powerful, uh, and, and actually you can see that all around us too because the news even uh, uses emotion to get people fired up or to get them to kind of join in with a certain thought process. Uh, Movies, they use emotions. They even have music playing in the background to tweak your emotions, whether whether you're supposed to be scared and it's dun-dun, dun-dun-dun-dun, you know, or whether it's going to be something where it's more of a joyful thing and you got this dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun, you know, or if it's going to be something kind of a more creepy nature, they they play with it. If a if a movie had no music in the background, you know, you'd be sitting there looking at it, and you wouldn't you wouldn't feel the emotion that you do um, when I mean these movies really do play on your emotions, and and they and they get you to join in on on uh, on certain thoughts where the movie is leading you to and so forth. So that's something to be very careful of because emotions are very strong. They have the capacity to affect you both physically and mentally. Physically, emotions can cause you to experience intense reactions within your bodies. For instance, some emotions can cause a flushed face, like when you're embarrassed, or faster breathing as when you're angry, butterflies in the stomach and goosebumps on the skin when you're nervous or afraid. And then mentally, emotions can result in feeling energized or worn out, satisfied or discouraged, motivated or depressed. If not managed appropriately, some emotions can result in serious physical and mental illness. And don't get me wrong, I wasn't trying to get you to go home and watch a movie to see how the emotions were played, you know, or or, or how it plays on your emotions, nothing like that. But I did want to bring it to your attention because a lot of people can't identify with that, whether, you know, currently or in the past, um, you you can think about it, even... Uh, commercials on your phone, ads on your phone, commercials on the TV, on the radio. They play on your emotions. And one of the things um, in the automobile business that w- is, a, is a pretty standard statement with the trainers is when they're training salespeople, one of the most common things to get across to the salesperson is that people will pay a lot more to be entertained then they will be informed. So when you're selling that car, you better be entertaining to them because if you're just sitting there telling them how many cubic inches of uh, space it has in the back seat of the car and and how many people can fit in there if they're a certain weight and a certain height and a certain width and then how many bolts are on each wheel and what diameter the bolts are and what thread pattern is in the car. You know, you start giving them all that information, they're going to go bye-bye and go to the next guy. They're looking to be entertained to get their next car. <laughs> so, it, but it, but I'm telling you, that's something that, that all, all sales uh, managers do teach is, is to play on the emotions. <clears throat> well, um, let's see, page 35. Um, you know, if you look down uh, down towards the bottom of page 35, uh, it has a little box and it says, Warning, daily hassles are hazardous. The University of Michigan socio- sociologist uh, Louis Verbrugge, who followed the daily lives of 589 men and women, found that daily irritations triggered bad moods, 
which in turn were followed by physical troubles. So, so even studies have been done on this. This is not something that we just came up with. I mean, this is real, man. All right, so on the next checkbox, back on page 53, emotions affect me mentally. They can influence my mind so strongly that my ability to make rational decisions could be affected. Let's turn over to page uh, 41. And uh, this is talking a little bit about a little bit about the way you respond, um, because they, you know, they affect you mentally. It, it, it does influence your mind, and your ability to make rational decisions could be affected. I mean, you know, page 40 covers a little bit of that, too. But in, on page 41, down towards the bottom, applying self-control to any emotion, whether it's fear, joy, excitement, or anger, is an important aspect of developing character. Acting on emotions without careful consideration is called acting impulsively, and impulsive actions occur when you allow emotions to cloud your ability to think rationally. To be rational means to think sensibly and wisely, having gathered enough facts to make intelligent choices. You know, that doesn't occur in a split second like that. Rational thinking leads to decisions that are well thought out, positive, and moral. Okay? Um, and then, uh, page 42 also, uh, impulsive reactions can lead to irrational behavior, uh, it starts out with a lack of self-control, leads to ir irrational responses, and so keeping that in mind, it, it, you could come up with any kind of scenario that, uh, uh, as wild as you would want to imagine about an irrational response to something. So be aware that, that it does affect you mentally. Hopefully it won't continue to affect you. Hopefully you, you, you know, st start conducting yourself and making rational decisions so it's not constantly affecting you. The next checkbox uh, is uncontrolled emotions can lead to actions you might regret. Let's uh, turn over to page 40, 43. And, and remember, also on page 40, you know, it talks about the confusing emotions and everything and how easily it would be to make the wrong decision. Go to page 43. And now we've covered this article a couple times in the past several weeks. Um, I know Chris went into de detail on it. And then the last class, we, we went into a little more detail on it, too. So, you know, we've already seen this particular uh, article, but keep in mind how ridiculous this was. That this was uncontrolled emotions that can lead to actions you might regret. Notice the word "might" because obviously this lady didn't really, or or stating it to the news or when she was interviewed, she she didn't seem to regret it because she said her only regret really was that she didn't run him over one more time. <laughs> you know, so. She didn't, it doesn't seem that she learned much from it after spending 20 years or, or close to it in prison. Um, remember, this is the one where the lady caught her husband, you know, with somebody else on her 11th wedding anniversary, and she got so bothered about it, she ran him down with her, with the man's daughter in the car with her, you know, with her stepdaughter in the car. Uh, so she had no concern for, for much of anybody at that time. And, and those were very uncontrolled emotions that she was giving into and letting them guide, uh, guide her life. You remember in the, uh, the character unit at the very back, well, my page is actually missing, but in the character unit, uh, one of the last things, in fact, I think it's on, on the last page, if you, if you get that far and look at it, you can uh, see where, and I'm going to paraphrase a little bit, but it says, don't let emotions run your life. You know, get the facts. Remember, one of the, the first thing that we want you to do in the Peaceful Solution when making a decision is to be educated. Get the facts about, the, about what you're trying to decide about. Get the facts. Be educated on what's going on. And so that's what we're talking about. Let the facts guide you and make a right choice using proper moral character. You choose the way to, to operate. Don't let your emotions guide you. Almost always when your emotions guide you, it's going to come out not so great. All right, well, 
Evaluating your thoughts and emotions regarding a situation is an important part of practicing self-control. That's uh, now page 46. Page 46 at the top there, applying self-control to your emotions. Controlling your full range of emotions requires you to examine your thoughts and evaluate what you are thinking and feeling. You want to evaluate it. Evaluate. You're thinking about it. You're deciding, okay, what is this I'm thinking? What is this I'm feeling? What am I going to change? My thoughts are hot. Let me change them to cool thoughts. I'm feeling kind of angry. Let me change that before it takes off in the wrong direction. You know, evaluate what's going on, and then you need to respond in a way that's controlled, well-planned, and respectful. And, of course, we have right there the introduction of, of course, the STOP acronym. One more time, I'm going to get it in your head there. You know, that's what it's talking about right there. So let's go on back over to page 53. And the next, the next box, it says, keeping things in perspective and not blowing them out of proportion will help me to respond rationally. Okay, we talked a little bit about that already, of keeping it in perspective. A again, you know, most, most anything that, I can't say everything would, but, but most any of these, these little things that, that occur in your life, from, from day to day when someone steps on your toes or, you know, they say something that, that you don't think is quite right and, you know, they're talking about voting for this candidate and you, you don't think that candidate is worth a hoot or they're talking about this particular uh, law that went to effect and you don't like this law and what, whatever the case might be, you know, or, or they like peanut butter with bananas and you don't and you like peanut butter and jelly and they don't, you know, you can get in an argument about this stupidest little things that make absolutely no difference in your life. You know, that takes place on a daily basis. Think about what you're doing. I try to think about what I'm doing. I'm, I'm guilty of it too. Uh, so this is what practicing this peaceful solution is all about. It's, it's stopping and thinking about these things. You know, does it really matter that, that, um, that they're talking up that peanut butter and banana sandwich and I find it disgusting? It's making my stomach turn. Does it really, really matter in life? No. So why worry about it? I know that's kind of an extreme example, but, you know, it applies in everything that we do every day. You know, the car door opened and it bumped up against you. Does it, does it matter? Do you really have to go off on the guy? You know, think about these things. They're small things in life. Keeping it in perspective, negative thoughts and strong emotions can cloud our ability. You know, we can't see. We don't know what we're doing. We're so crazed. It can cloud our ability to see things in perspective and increase the opportunity to act irrationally. To see a situation in perspective means to be able to view things through some clear glasses, you know, view things in their proper order of importance without overreacting. Proper importance. Remember, think about it. Is it going to make a difference tomorrow or the next day or the next day or 10 years from now? So even though certain situations can trigger strong emotions, it's up to you to control how you respond. Okay, keeping things in perspective, not blowing them out of pr proportion. Now, on the last checkbox, when I stop, think, and consider my options, do I need to hold it up there again, the sign, remember the STOP acronym? We're all starting to kind of get it in our head, right? It, it, it really is amazing when we can start using that, you know. I, I know that a lot of people know what this is. Anybody who's been learning the peaceful solution for any period of time knows about this. But do we use it in our daily life? These are really the steps. We're learning it in this chapter right here. You are learning how to practice that very thing, that STOP acronym, by learning to evaluate the thoughts and the feelings that you're having and keeping it in perspective so that you can make a, a clear rational decision on how to continue and how to behave yourself. 
You know, it's easy to look at somebody else that's not behaving properly and it's a little bit crazed and going off on someone and thinking, man, what, what's, what a nutcase, you know? I mean, it's easy to look at someone else and say that, right? But what about us? What about if we're doing it? Others are probably looking and saying, man, what's wrong with that guy? But keep it in mind. Keep it in perspective. This is what we're learning right now how to do this. So when I stop thinking, consider my options, and then proceed by making a positive moral decision, I'm able to control my emotions. And I think we already turned over there, but page, uh, page 46, on applying the self-control. We, we just talked about evaluating what we're thinking and feeling. We, we actually went over this already, but it doesn't hurt to do it again. Controlling our full range of emotions requires us to examine our thoughts, evaluate what we're thinking. And something about that word evaluate, even though we're looking at it and deciding and thinking about what we're doing and where we're going wrong, you know, our values, that, that word right there, you know, it has value in it. Our values have an effect on how we're thinking about these things. If... <clears throat> If the situation arises ever in our life to where the, the thought might be uh, uh, or the situation we might think or others might think and be pushing us towards it uh, to where there might be some thought of like even taking a human life. If you have a high value on human life, when you're evaluating that situation, you're not going to go that route. You're not going to take that life. If you have such a high value on human life to where you would never, ever, ever do it under any circumstance, you know what? You're not going to go the wrong route. You're going you're gonna to use what you have, those values inside you that you've built up using proper moral character education and with the, with the positive character traits that you know, you're going to put them to work instead of the negatives and you're going to say, no way, no way. Or even when it comes to stealing, if you have a very high value placed upon not trespassing and stealing, you're not even going to be swayed to do that. So see how important our values come into play. Remember, it's kind of like this diagram right here, you know, it's all kind of kind of synergistic. It all works together in this big circle that just keeps going around and around and around, you know, it, it just goes around and around. It's this big circle of one thing leads to another, which leads to another, which leads to another. And that's what we have to keep in mind, is that it does all work together. Just because we're talking about self-control right now, which you have to have to practice any part of the peaceful solution, you have to have self-control to practice the character traits. You have to have self-control to practice accepting others. You have to have self-control to be responsible in your daily life. You have to have self-control to show respect. But what are you going to do? How are you going to feed that self-control? What are you going to do when it comes time to consider your options? When it comes time to think about it and consider those options, what are you going to do if you haven't learned some respect? What are you going to do if you haven't learned acceptance and responsibility? What are, what are you going to do? you got to have it all. It all goes together. See? But this self-control that you're learning right now is the foundation of a great moral character. And that's what we need to really work on, being able to practice that self-control when we first start kind of, you know, getting that feeling, okay? You know, that feeling starts coming, all right? Okay, well, I'd like to thank everybody for, for coming here tonight and being online with us for the class, you know, however the case might be. And I'd like for all of us to consider, even when you leave out of here tonight, you know, now's a great time to start practicing it. Uh, control yourself. Evaluate your thoughts and your feelings. And then, then let's do it again tomorrow. Let's, let's go, to, go to sleep tonight with that thought on our mind. And then let's wake up in the morning with that thought in our mind and go to work and, and make everyone's day a great delight. Because I saw a lot of smiling faces out there, you know, so all you great smiling people, let's uh, put it to work, okay? And thank you for coming. Oh, next class, next class will be on 4-3, and uh, that'll be on Sunday at 5.30 p.m. 
We look forward to you being here. I believe uh, Chris will be uh, teaching that class, so everybody join us, okay? It'll be great. Thank you.